it is bar none the best video footage that I have ever seen come through my laptop. Hey guys, welcome back to Orms TV. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're just going to have a discussion about a camera. A camera that both myself and Matt have used, but neither of us have used it extensively. But we have used it just enough to have an opinion on it. And that is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. So as Dion's mentioned, we did both get the chance to play with it for a little while but not to go to Mozambique, Namibia to shoot for a wildlife conservation company, uh, which our friend Sean Fulion has done. So he's been kind enough to lend us some of his honestly incredible footage. Um, so while we will throw in a couple of our clips, the majority of what you're gonna see is coming from Sean. Yeah, so just to kick things off then, we'd like to run you guys through the basic specs of this camera. So obviously, the first spec, and it's in the name already, is that this unit obviously records 6K. And can't remember any of the other specs. Well, uh, <laughs> so I mean, the most important one we've agreed on is the Black Magic RAW, that Generation 5 film color, which is probably the only thing we agree on on this camera. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, color grading it, uh, especially when you drop it into uh, DaVinci Resolve. The ecosystem just works together. The colors are yeah. vibrant, yeah. Uh, the picture's sharp. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, the dynamic range as well, like probably the best dynamic range, sorry, the widest dynamic range that I've personally ever experienced. Um, just for reference, Matt actually videos properly and professionally. I mess about, um, usually with cameras that we have on loan from suppliers and that kind of thing. So a lot of my shooting experience is very limited to, you know, Sony's and Fuji's and Canon, you know. Um, so not really this type of camera. So it was extremely exciting to actually try it and see what it's like to shoot with a unit where I think you said it the best, like a lot of the automatic and easy features have been stripped out and it's just a tool for creating cinematic video. Absolutely, it's, it's removing those uh, compromises for comfort that you're seeing in your everyday consumer level camera where it's it's focused on the cinema experience you're gonna have to autofocus you need to make a plan for stabilization uh, battery life needs to be looked at but what is coming out is an image that is worthy of absolutely anything yeah and the robustness of that of that image and obviously that is due to the black magic raw which this camera will record internally um, so just to hark back a little bit um, in terms of internal recording you can record onto an sd card or a c fast card which is a little bit old by now but we'll touch on that in a little bit but you can also plug in your external through the USB-C absolutely fast there yeah absolutely which is actually the way that we'd recommend that you go about using the camera because writing that 6k onto an SD card is just not really viable it's too big and I mean you're gonna spend tons on SD cards just buy an external SSD and run it off the off the USB-C so the other very nice thing that's included is of course the built-in NDs. And that's one of the elements that separates the Pro from the other 6K models in the range. Yes, yeah, so any cinematographer out there will know when you've built up your rig and you need to start fiddling with matte boxes or external variable NDs where you mm. either having to change the density or change the actual filter, it becomes really a big hassle, especially when you're shooting outdoors and your lighting conditions are constantly changing. So to be able to just have that one button to drop you, uh, it's, it's a huge, makes a huge difference to the shooting experience. Mm. So speaking of things that we both like about this camera and specs, there is obviously other recording options within the unit itself. Yes, of course. So I mean, if you want to stick to your Blackmagic RAW and your 6K, you do have different compression ratio options internally. Mm. So shooting at one-to-one -one SD cards aren't an option. The file size is gonna be huge. The writing speed is too fast for that SD card to handle. 
but you do have other options all the way up to 12 to 1 compression which obviously is hugely reducing your file size and your writing speed so the SD cards, most SD cards out there can handle it and you aren't actually losing all that much information. I shot quite a lot on that 12 to 1 compression because we didn't have the external drive and as you can see in the footage it's, it's still totally usable. Yeah, so some of the footage that you're seeing is shot by Matt. Um, you're not gonna see any footage that I shot because it's a bit rubbish. Um, but anyway, still had fun using the camera. Um, then in terms of the, um, the codecs that you can record in, you can obviously also do ProRes in the camera, um, in addition to the Blackmagic RAW. Um, and you can pretty much go sort of like work your way down from 6K, um, 4K, uh, 2.7 in there 1080. as well. 1080. Mm -hmm. And your 2.7 and your 1080 gives you um, up to like 120 frames a yeah, second, right? correct. 120 frames a second, uh, which obviously on that sensor, even though it's still on 2.7K, it's still totally usable that you can slot into your 4K timeline. Obviously, the 6K resolution is not a standard at all. Mm -hmm. um, so what most people are doing with the 6K Pro is shooting on 6K, downsampling it into the 4K timeline, and then exporting there. So taking the 2.7K up to 4K, you really aren't going to lose that much quality. Okay, fair enough. Um, then I want to chat briefly about one last thing that both of us really like about this camera, um, and that is the gyro stabilization that's in there. And that's a, a reasonably new release from mm. Blackmagic. We know the tech's been inside of the cameras. Mm. It's in the, the, the 4K, it's in the 6K, it's in the 6K Pro. It just hasn't been usable up until I think it was around September mm. they released the updates and it's, it's stabilization on another level um, I shot everything totally handheld and it honestly it, it looks like it was done on a gimbal especially shooting yeah. in 6k 4k timeline that little bit of crop in that you get it, it really looks like it's been used on a gimbal yeah so um, essentially the camera has a built-in gyro sensor and with some very cool software that I don't understand. It essentially uses that information, digitally crops into your image slightly, and then moves that frame to counteract it. The nice thing about that is, is that unlike with sensor shift stabilization, you're not getting any wobble, any weird artifacts if you're shooting on a wider lens. You're not getting any of that type of, you know, weirdness that we've sort of come to expect from sensor stabilization. The downside of course is is that you do crop into the frame a little bit further and unfortunately because you're already shooting at Super 35 now you're cropping in a little bit more you're losing a little bit of, resol of resolution from that sensor so there's a bit of a trade-off but the smoothness that you get out of it is unmatched like I've, I've seen shakier footage come off a DJI Ronin Mm. than just using that gyro stabilization. It's phenomenal. So I know you thought the gyro info was the last thing we agreed on, but I think the screen on the 6K Pro also is in a league of its own, yeah. that 1500 nit brightness, the size of it, it's uh, kind of unseen in the industry. Yeah, just as a built-in monitor, it is phenomenal. The brightness is insane it's almost like having a smallish ipad on the back of the unit it is it's incredible and coupled with that the menu structure is actually really simple really easy but that might also be because there isn't a lot of options um but again we'll get to that um but yes the screen incredible the screen does have some downsides though yes uh, so when when black magic launched the unit there were uh, white balance color issues on the screens that were all sort of varying in mm. extremity um, But what's nice about that is they released then a firmware update where you can Sort of calibrate the screen on your own Which I think is quite nice instead of sending out a blanket update to change everyone's screen temperatures Because they were all slightly different mm. you now have the opportunity to set it to what your scene looks like Yeah, and I think it just feeds again into the the mentality behind the camera where it is just you have absolute control of everything nothing is kind of automatically done for you um, and that kind of comes to 
some of the niggly bits within this camera and where I personally struggled with it and where I think that a camera like this is not the right tool for everybody but it is by far the best tool for some. So sticking with the screen that leads into problem number one for me and that's battery life. It, it's not anything new. Everyone knows about this. Yeah. The little batteries that you get given in the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, they claim about an hour, an hour and a bit. In our experience, not even close. No, I was getting about 20 minutes, like half an hour if I was shooting in HD. Um, and that's pretty much it. Then it was battery done, out, new battery in, on charge, hope for the best. And yeah, it's, it's, it's just not a workable solution. The way that you want to use this camera is to run it off a V-mount and just wire that in and build yourself a little kit around it. Absolutely, and I think Blackmagic know that and mm. they've gone with that approach. This isn't a camera that your average human being just picks up and says, I'm going to go do cinematography because that's what I feel like. Yeah. Uh, it is built for actual cinematographers and you will need to build it out. You need to know what you're doing in order to get the most out of this camera. But as that sort of a tool, I think it, it, it does an amazing job. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So sticking with things that we don't like that much on, on the unit, um, and this is actually a point where we disagree, uh, the fact that it has an EF mount. Yeah, so in my opinion, I think the EF glass is amazing. It's probably one of the best selling mounts of all time. So there's so much glass out there. It's super high quality. And on the secondhand market, it's very affordable. Having the cheaper option of secondhand EF mount lenses, I think really helps. Yeah, for me, it's just, I would have liked to see, since it is a new camera and the previous 6K and the 4K and those units have been around for a while, I would have loved to see that evolution to a a mirrorless lens mount. So maybe Canon RF mount, Sony E mount, something like that, where they could reduce the flange distance, make the camera a little bit more compact because you have that protruding mount at the front. And that would then allow you to adapt more lenses to it. Because of that flange distance on the EF, you are a little bit limited. You can pretty much use EF glass mm -hmm. and that's kind of it. Mm -hmm. There's not much else that you, can, that you can do there. But if it had a mirrorless mount, you know, you could become a little bit more creative um, with various adapters. You could put, you could put, you know, um, yeah, you could put Leica M lenses on mm -hmm. there. You know, you could put Fuji glass on there. You could, you know, do pretty much anything. And that would just open it up a little bit more mm. um, for me. But my main thing is just make it a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. But again, it, it does come down to that people are going to build it out. So that little bit of space, if it makes a difference to you, maybe it's not the unit you're looking for, but if it is, then so be it. For me, there's another couple of niggly features within this camera that detract from its usability for me and i'm going to keep saying for me because my experience with this camera is not everyone's experience and i am not the type of person that this camera is aimed at now we know that it's been a black magic thing for a long time there is no real autofocus in the unit like yes you have sort of lockout autofocus but that's it you're not going to get eye detect and face tracking and planes and trains and animals and all the stuff that you see in a lot of other cameras these days that simply isn't there and there's other little things that I never really realized how much I rely on it until I was shooting with the 6k um, like auto white balance like yes I know there is an auto white balance feature but it doesn't really do white balance automatically um, and that for me was quite strange. But that also speaks to what this camera fundamentally is. And it is an uncompromising tool. It is not a camera for somebody like me who wants to do some video, but do it easily. Point the camera in a direction, 
It auto focuses on some eyes and some faces and I hit record and the white balance is there and the exposure is right and I don't need to worry about it and I can just focus on framing and composition. That's not what this camera is. No, it's not. And as we've mentioned so many times already, but for me personally, as slightly more professional on the cinema side, using the camera, yes, you have those little niggles where you're struggling to find the focus and the battery isn't working. But personally, as soon as I got that footage off the camera onto the computer and into Resolve, you forget about every little annoyance and niggle and it, it comes down to the image off of that sensor, which for me, they've stripped everything away and said, this is what cinematography is about, and that's it. Yeah, um, I can honestly say I had the exact same experience. Um, filming with it, I struggled, but once I fed it into Resolve on my laptop, it blew me away because it was the easiest editing experience that I have had to date. Color matching with it, no problem. Grading with it, no problem at all. And I will say that maybe if you're editing in a different suite, you're not shoot, um, editing in Resolve, if you're in Adobe or something like that, yeah, you might find it tricky, but Blackmagic designs their camera to fit into that ecosystem. And once you have that dialed in, it is bar none the best video footage that I have ever seen come through my laptop. It is absolutely incredible. I just cannot say that enough. So yeah, it's not the camera for me. It's maybe more the camera for you, but it's not the camera for everybody. It's the camera for somebody who is going to use it for the purpose that it's designed for to use this camera as a tool to create cinematography, to go out and create video footage where you are in control, where you are in charge of what the camera is doing and who wants to be able to manipulate that footage to one of the highest degrees that I have ever seen. No two ways around it. I think that's what this thing is for. And that's pretty much it for our slightly different review on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Yeah guys, and if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel for more content like this, and if there's anything else that you would like to know or anything that you would like to tell us about this unit, drop it in the comments below. We love hearing from you guys. Until next time, cheers.